Are you a smart person who often feels lonely despite being surrounded by people? Today, we're diving deep into the intricate relationship between intelligence and loneliness, guided by the profound teachings of Buddhism. Stay tuned as we uncover 10 compelling reasons why smart individuals may find themselves grappling with feelings of isolation and how Buddhist philosophy offers insights and solutions to navigate this complex emotional landscape. Lesson 1. Noticing what they don't know. Smart people often feel lonely because they are acutely aware of the vastness of their ignorance. They understand that the more they learn, the more they realize they don't know. This paradox of knowledge, where learning illuminates our ignorance, is a common source of loneliness for intelligent individuals. However, this realization is not a cause for despair, but rather an opportunity for growth and self-discovery. The more we learn, the more we realize how much there is still to learn. This can be a humbling experience, leading some to feel overwhelmed or isolated. In the Buddhist perspective, this realization is a step towards enlightenment. It is a recognition of the vast and complex nature of existence and our small yet significant role within it. The recognition of our ignorance connects us with the rest of humanity. We are all on a journey of learning and discovery each with our unique paths and experiences. No one person knows everything, and everyone has something to learn. This shared experience of ignorance can be a source of connection, rather than isolation. In the words of the Buddha, the whole secret of existence is to have no fear. Never fear what will become of you, depend on no one. Only the moment you reject all help are you freed. This teaching encourages us to embrace our ignorance, to not fear the vastness of what we do not know, but to see it as an opportunity for growth and self-discovery. Lesson 2. Feeling left out because they're smart. Feeling left out or isolated because of one's intelligence is a common experience among smart people. This sense of isolation often stems from the perception that they are different from others, which can lead to feelings of disconnection and loneliness. The teachings of Buddhism offer valuable insights and guidance on how to navigate these feelings. Anatta teaches that the notion of a separate, permanent self is an illusion. This concept encourages us to let go of our ego and the need to feel superior or different. When smart people cling to their intelligence as a defining aspect of their identity, they may inadvertently create a barrier between themselves and others. By embracing the teaching of Anatta, they can begin to see beyond the illusion of separateness and cultivate a sense of interconnectedness with others. Another important teaching that can help smart people feel less isolated is metta, or loving-kindness. Metta is a practice of cultivating unconditional kindness towards oneself and others. When smart people feel left out, they often experience feelings of self-doubt and inadequacy. The practice of metta can help them develop self-compassion and understand that everyone, regardless of their intelligence, experiences feelings of loneliness and disconnection at times. By extending kindness towards themselves and others, they can foster deeper connections and alleviate feelings of isolation. The Buddhist principle of right speech can also provide guidance for smart people who feel left out. Right speech encourages meaningful and compassionate communication. Smart people may sometimes struggle to engage in small talk or find humor in mundane conversations. However, by practicing right speech, they can learn to communicate in a way that is both authentic and compassionate, fostering understanding and connection with others. The Buddhist teaching of Sangha, or community, can be particularly beneficial for smart people who feel left out. Sangha emphasizes the importance of finding a community of like-minded individuals who understand and support each other. By seeking out such communities, smart people can find a sense of belonging and connection, reducing feelings of isolation. The feelings of being left out experienced by smart people can be addressed and alleviated through the teachings of Buddhism. By embracing the concepts of anatta, metta, right speech, sangha, and equanimity, Smart people can cultivate a deeper understanding of themselves and others, fostering connections and reducing feelings of isolation. Remember, intelligence is a gift, not a source of separation. Let it illuminate your path towards understanding and connection, not isolation 
and disconnection. Lesson 3. Too busy with work or schoolwork to make friends. Intelligent individuals often find themselves engrossed in their work or studies, leading to a lack of time for social interactions. This can result in feelings of isolation and loneliness. The Buddhist teaching of the Middle Way provides valuable insight into this issue. The Middle Way is a fundamental principle in Buddhism, which encourages avoiding extremes and seeking balance in life. It is the path between the two extremes of sensual indulgence and self-mortification. In the context of our discussion, it refers to the balance between work and social life. Smart people with their insatiable thirst for knowledge and success often tilt the scale towards work, leaving little time for social interactions. They may view socializing as a distraction or a less productive use of their time. However, the middle way teaches us that a balanced life is a fulfilling life. Work and achievements are undoubtedly important, but so are relationships and experiences. Social connections provide emotional support foster a sense of belonging, and contribute to overall well-being. They are not mere distractions but essential aspects of a well-rounded life. The Buddhist concept of impermanence also plays a role here. Everything in life is transient, including work and achievements. Relationships, on the other hand, can provide lasting happiness and comfort during difficult times. Be present in the moment, whether you're working or socializing. Mindfulness allows you to fully engage in and appreciate the task at hand, making it more enjoyable and fulfilling. Feeling lonely due to being too busy with work or schoolwork is a common experience among smart people. The teachings of Buddhism provide valuable guidance on how to overcome this. By embracing the middle way, practicing mindfulness, and applying right effort, smart people can achieve a balance between work and social life, leading to a more fulfilling, and less lonely existence. In the words of the Buddha, thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. So, share your time, share your happiness, and light up your life with the warmth of social connections. Lesson 4. Can't join conversations or be funny at parties. Right speech is not just about speaking truthfully, but also about the tone the intention, and the impact of our words. It encourages us to use our words to promote harmony, understanding, and compassion. For intelligent individuals who may struggle with small talk or humor, this principle can serve as a guiding light. Firstly, it's important to understand that there's no need to force ourselves to fit into a mold that doesn't suit us. If lighthearted banter or humor doesn't come naturally to us, that's perfectly okay. Each of us has our unique way of expressing ourselves, and authenticity should always be valued over conformity. This doesn't mean we should isolate ourselves completely. The principle of right speech encourages us to engage in conversations that are meaningful and beneficial. If we find it hard to join in trivial conversations, we can instead steer the discussion towards topics that we are passionate about or knowledgeable in. This way, we can contribute to the conversation in a meaningful way, while also staying true to ourselves. The principle of right speech also emphasizes the importance of listening. Often, we may feel left out of conversations because we are too focused on what we want to say, rather than truly listening to what others are saying. By practicing active listening, we can better understand others' perspectives, and this can help us respond in a more appropriate and engaging manner. Another aspect to consider is the role of humor in conversations. While humor can be a great icebreaker, it's not the only way to connect with others. If we find it hard to be funny, we can instead focus on being kind, empathetic, and supportive. These qualities are highly valued in any social setting and can help us build strong and meaningful connections with others. It's important to remember that social interactions are not a performance. We don't need to constantly entertain others or prove our worth through our words. Instead, we should aim to use our words to foster understanding, promote harmony, and express our true selves. This is the essence of right speech. The goal is not to fit in, but to connect. And connection is not about being funny or witty, 
but about being authentic, understanding, and compassionate. So, let's embrace the principle of right speech and use our words to create a positive impact in our social interactions. Lesson 5. Hanging out with socially awkward people. Smart individuals often find themselves in the company of those who may be socially awkward or introverted, leading to feelings of isolation and disconnect. However, Buddhism encourages compassion, understanding, and patience towards all beings, regardless of their social skills or disposition. By cultivating these qualities, we can foster deeper connections, help others feel more comfortable in social situations, and ultimately alleviate our own feelings of loneliness. In Buddhism, the practice of metta or loving-kindness meditation is a powerful tool for cultivating compassion and understanding. By extending feelings of love, kindness, and goodwill towards ourselves and others, we can develop a greater sense of empathy and connection. When we encounter socially awkward individuals, rather than feeling frustrated or disconnected, we can view them with compassion, recognizing that their awkwardness may stem from fear, insecurity, or past experiences. By extending kindness and patience, we can help create a more inclusive and welcoming environment for everyone. Buddhism emphasizes the importance of understanding and accepting others as they are, without judgment or expectation. This is known as the practice of equanimity, one of the four Brahmaviharas, or divine abodes. Equanimity allows us to maintain a balanced and clear mind, even in the face of challenging social situations. By cultivating equanimity, we can learn to appreciate the unique qualities and strengths of socially awkward individuals rather than focusing on their perceived shortcomings. Buddhism encourages us to cultivate mindfulness, or the practice of being fully present and engaged in the current moment. By being mindful in our interactions with socially awkward individuals, we can better attune ourselves to their needs and preferences, allowing us to communicate more effectively and build stronger connections. Mindfulness also allows us to recognize and manage our own emotions and reactions, helping us respond with compassion and understanding, rather than frustration or discomfort. To further develop our ability to connect with socially awkward individuals, we can practice active listening, a skill emphasized in Buddhist teachings. Active listening involves giving our full attention to the speaker, without interrupting or judging, and seeking to understand their perspective. By listening actively, we can create a safe and supportive space for open communication, allowing socially awkward individuals to express themselves more freely and comfortably. It's essential to recognize that social awkwardness is not a fixed trait, but rather a dynamic aspect of human interaction. With patience, understanding, and support, socially awkward individuals can develop their social skills and become more confident in their interactions. By offering guidance, encouragement, and positive reinforcement, we can help them grow and flourish, ultimately fostering a more inclusive and connected community. Feeling lonely due to hanging out with socially awkward people can be addressed by embracing Buddhist teachings such as compassion, understanding, patience, equanimity, interdependence, mindfulness, active listening, and support. By cultivating these qualities and skills, we can transform our social interactions, fostering deeper connections, and alleviating feelings of isolation and loneliness. Lesson 6. Not understanding important others' words or actions. Misunderstandings can create a chasm between individuals, leading to feelings of isolation and confusion. This is particularly true for intelligent individuals who may overanalyze or misinterpret others' words or actions. Buddhism offers profound insights into this issue through the concept of right understanding, one of the Eightfold Paths to Enlightenment. Right understanding, also known as right view or right perspective, encourages us to see things as they truly are, without the distortions of our biases, prejudices, or preconceptions. It's about understanding the true nature of reality, including the nature of our existence, the nature of suffering, and the path to the cessation of suffering. For instance, if a friend cancels plans at the last minute, an intelligent person might interpret this as a sign of disrespect or a lack of interest in the friendship. 
However, through the lens of right understanding, they might realize that there could be numerous reasons for the cancellation, such as a personal emergency or a sudden change in work schedule. By seeking to understand rather than jumping to conclusions, they can prevent misunderstandings and maintain the health of the relationship. Right understanding involves recognizing the impermanence and interconnectedness of all things. This means understanding that people and situations are constantly changing and that our actions have consequences not just for ourselves, but for others as well. By cultivating this understanding, we can become more patient, compassionate, and wise in our interactions with others. Another way to cultivate right understanding is through reflection and self-inquiry. This involves questioning our assumptions, beliefs, and biases, and seeking to understand their origins and implications. It also involves reflecting on our experiences, learning from our mistakes, and continually refining our understanding of ourselves and others. Cultivating right understanding involves engaging in open and honest communication with others. This means expressing our thoughts and feelings clearly and respectfully, listening actively to others, and seeking to find common ground. It also means being willing to admit when we're wrong, apologizing when necessary, and forgiving others for their mistakes. Quiet understanding others' words or actions can lead to feelings of loneliness and confusion. By cultivating right understanding, as taught in Buddhism, we can overcome these feelings and foster healthier, more fulfilling relationships. We can learn to see things as they truly are, without the distortions of our biases and prejudices, and respond in a more thoughtful and compassionate manner. Lesson 7. Feeling pressured to act a certain way because of intelligence. Intelligence, often seen as a gift, can sometimes become a burden. Smart individuals may feel pressured to act, think, and behave in certain ways because of their intelligence. This pressure can stem from various sources, including society, family, peers, or even oneself. One of the reasons smart people feel pressured to act a certain way is due to societal expectations. Society often associates intelligence with success and achievement. As a result, smart individuals may feel pressured to constantly achieve and excel in everything they do. Another source of pressure for smart people is the expectation to always have the answers. They may feel pressured to always be right, to always know the solution to a problem, or to always have an opinion on a topic. This expectation can lead to fear of failure, fear of making mistakes, and fear of being seen as less intelligent. Buddhism's teachings on impermanence, or anicca, can help us deal with this pressure. Anicca reminds us that everything is temporary and constantly changing. Just as we cannot always control the external world, we cannot always have the right answers. By accepting this impermanence, we can let go of the need to always be right and instead embrace the opportunity to learn and grow from our mistakes and uncertainties. Smart people may also feel pressured to act a certain way because of self-imposed expectations. They may set high standards for themselves and feel disappointed or inadequate when they fail to meet these standards. Buddhism encourages self-compassion and understanding in such situations. It teaches us to treat ourselves with the same kindness and compassion that we would offer to a good friend. By cultivating self-compassion, we can reduce the pressure we put on ourselves and instead foster a healthier and more supportive relationship with ourselves. Buddhism's teachings on mindfulness can also help smart people deal with the pressure to act a certain way. Mindfulness encourages us to be fully present in the moment, without judgment. By practicing mindfulness, we can become more aware of our thoughts and feelings, including the pressure we feel to act a certain way. This awareness can help us step back from these pressures and make choices that align with our true selves, rather than with external expectations. By embracing the concepts of anatta, right intention, anicca, self-compassion, and mindfulness, smart individuals can relieve the pressure to conform to certain expectations, embrace their true selves, and lead a more fulfilled and authentic life. Lesson 8. Not having understanding people around, feeling lonely. Buddhism emphasizes the importance of compassion and understanding, not just towards others, but also towards ourselves. When we are told that our work isn't good enough, 
It's essential to respond with self-compassion, to acknowledge our feelings of hurt and disappointment, and to treat ourselves with kindness and understanding. Buddhism also encourages us to cultivate a beginner's mind, a concept borrowed from Zen Buddhism. A beginner's mind is open, eager, and free of preconceptions. It embraces learning and growth, and it isn't afraid of making mistakes. When we approach our work with a beginner's mind, we can see criticism not as a personal attack or a reflection of our worth, but as an opportunity to learn and grow. Buddhism teaches us about the impermanence of all things, including our work and the opinions of others. Just as a beautiful sand mandala is eventually swept away, so too are our accomplishments and failures. They do not define us. They are merely temporary manifestations in the ever-changing stream of life. By cultivating mindfulness, self-compassion, and a beginner's mind, and by understanding the impermanence of all things, we can transform criticism into a catalyst for growth and learning. In doing so, we can alleviate the feelings of loneliness and inadequacy that often accompany criticism and instead foster a deeper sense of understanding, resilience, and connection. Lesson 10. Unable to tell if someone is truly interested or just using them. One of the key teachings of Buddhism that can help in this regard is the concept of sunyata or emptiness. This does not mean emptiness in the sense of nothingness, but rather the understanding that all things, including people and their motivations, are interconnected and interdependent. By understanding this interconnectedness, we can begin to see beyond the surface of people's actions and words and gain a deeper insight into their true intentions. Buddhism encourages us to cultivate mindfulness, which involves being fully present and aware in the moment without judgment. By being mindful in our interactions with others, we can become more attuned to their emotions and actions and gain a better understanding of their true intentions. This can help us distinguish between those who are genuinely interested in us and those who may have ulterior motives. It's important to note that Buddhism does not advocate for a cynical or suspicious approach to relationships. Instead, it encourages us to approach others with compassion and understanding, while also maintaining a clear and discerning mind. This balance between compassion and wisdom is embodied in the Bodhisattva ideal, which represents the perfect blend of a loving heart and a clear mind. Buddhism teaches us about the impermanence of all things, including relationships. This understanding can help us approach our interactions with others in a more relaxed and open manner, without clinging too tightly to expectations or fears. By accepting the impermanence of relationships, we can focus more on enjoying the present moment and less on worrying about others' intentions. Buddhism emphasizes the importance of cultivating ethical conduct, known as sila. By acting with integrity and kindness, we can attract similar people into our lives and build relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. This can help alleviate the fear of being used or manipulated, as we are more likely to attract genuine and trustworthy people when we ourselves embody these qualities. Buddhism encourages us to cultivate a sense of equanimity, which is a balanced and peaceful state of mind that remains undisturbed by the ups and downs of life. By cultivating equanimity, we can remain calm and composed even in the face of uncertainty or betrayal and maintain our inner peace and well-being. The feelings of loneliness experienced by smart people can be addressed and alleviated through the teachings of Buddhism. By embracing these teachings, we can foster a deeper understanding of ourselves and others, leading to more meaningful connections and a sense of inner peace. Remember, intelligence is a gift, not a burden. May you find comfort and guidance in these teachings, and may they light your path towards happiness and fulfillment.